Hi everyone, it's Mike from Lanzarote Information and uh, allow me an indulgence. This video is all about statistics, which is why I have my iPad set up in front of me because I can't remember them all. And for those of you who really aren't into stats, um, please feel free to click away anytime you want. Uh, I'm really interested in them because I think they tell you a story uh, about the evolution of Lanzarote. Now, the Cabildo produces a document every year called Lanzarote en Cifres, which kind of means Lanzarote by the numbers. And it, it's a fairly thick dossier. You can uh, download a PDF of it for yourself from the Cabildo website. And uh, it gives all sorts of stats. There's tons of information in there. A lot of it not very interesting and, and not very useful. Uh, and what I try and do every month, well, not I don't try to do it, I, what I do every year is pick what I think are the interesting bits out of it uh, and then create a short article for our website. And this is based on that article. But what I'm going to do is give you the numbers for each of the sections that I find interesting with a little bit of commentary on it. Now basically I've selected out five headings that I find interesting. The first is population, the second is the economy, the third is tourism, the fourth is, they call it society, it's a bit of a woolly name but you'll see what that's about when we get to it, and the final one is transport. So let's kick off with population and at the time this report was produced in uh, 2024, uh, because it's the most recent one, one we've had, uh, the island's population was 163,230. And at that time, about 23% of the population were foreign born. Now, both of those numbers have increased quite a bit with the most recent census that has been done. Uh, it's over 170,000 now, and it's closing in on 30% foreign born. Of the uh, biggest foreign populations on the island, the largest now is Colombians. Uh, on this report, 7,121 of them from Colombia in South America. The second highest were the British at 6,500. Now, I remember a time when there were about 10,000 Brits living on the island. So they are a decreasing population at the moment, presumably because of Brexit and it, the fact that it isn't so easy for people to come and live over here, and also because uh, they can't come and work here unless they get a job that a European, uh, an EU citizen can do. And the third highest foreign population on the island is now the Italians at 4,317. And the Italians have really kind of fallen in love with Lanzarote and embraced it over the last few years, hence their be them being the largest growing population on the island. And if you look at it uh, in terms of numbers, Arrecife, as you would expect, is the most populous place on the island with just over 68,000 people living there. Uh, and then you've got Tegise and Tias, very, they've always been pretty close together. Uh, Tegise has about 23,700, Tias 21,400. San Bartolome has always been a little bit behind with 19,600. Uh, and then Yaita behind them with 17,900. Now bear in mind this report was released before the most re recent census, and that has reinforced the fact that Yaisa is the largest growing or the fastest growing municipality on the island because they have overtaken uh, San Bartolome in the meantime. And then you've got the two very small ones, again at the time this report was written, uh, 6,800 in Tinajo, and the least populous, but also one of the largest municipalities, is Aria. And that's why you can walk for miles in Aria and not see another soul. So that's the population. We move on now to the economy. And uh, the island measures the number of people in work, uh, based on the number of people paying Social Security, because everyone working has to pay Social Security, whether they're an employee or self-employed as an autonomo, as it's called. And of that population, just under 77,000 were paying Social Security for, uh, and therefore in work. Uh, and of those, 85% were working in the service sector. Now, the service sector obviously includes hospitality, 
uh, hotel workers, bar and restaurant workers, so that's why it's such a high proportion of the island's working population. 8.8% uh, are in the con were in the construction sector, 3.2 in the industrial sector, uh, and 2.5 in the agricultural sector. So I, I think this is a bit of an issue for the island. It's too heavily weighted in terms of the um, uh, services sector, and we need to look to get more diverse, more interesting businesses on the island, not just to uh, reduce the risk of one sector getting into trouble, but also to give interesting, uh, different and well-paid jobs to local young people. I mean, there's no reason why we shouldn't have tech companies working here because all they need is an office and some desks and some computers. And, uh, and you know, why aren't they setting up here? Because we have very favorable tax rates for them. So I think it's an area that Cabildo really need to work on uh, and the Canarian government as well to diversify the, uh, the employment sectors on the islands. Uh, the other thing that relates to economy is that at, that at the time this report was created, we had just over 5,000 different companies on, operating on the island. So we've already mentioned that the vast majority of people are employed somehow in the hospitality sector. Uh, and of course, that stems from tourism. So the next heading we're going to look at is tourism. And uh, just over 3.4 million visitors came to the island in 2024, which was a record high. Now, those of you who watch these videos regularly will know that there is a movement at the moment to try and um, uh, combat what is what they describe as over tourism on the island and it's worth me putting my um, two pence worth into the debate um, a lot of people have said to me well you report the news Mike but what's your view on some of these things well I do agree that we do have too much tourism at the moment um, and you bear in mind that both the businesses we run very much rely on tourism so I certainly don't want to see it slashed but I do feel we have too many tourists here currently. When we first moved to the island uh, 25 years ago we only had 1.7 million tourists so that's doubled in the 25 years we have lived here. Now I feel and I've said this before publicly that we really ought to have a cap at about 3 million if we can find a way to actually achieve that. Because I remember when we were around the 3 million mark in the years before the pandemic, the island was thriving, was doing very well. Thank you very much for, for, to those tourists. But it didn't feel quite as stretched as it does now at 3.4 million. Um, we have queues at uh, the airport, we have queues for taxis, we have queues to get into Tim and Fire, and it just feels like it's a little bit too much. And if we can reduce that number by 10 or 12%, I think we'll go back to that comfortable feeling where everything felt about right. Now, in terms of where those people come from, well, in 2024, 50%, 50.6 to be precise, came from the United Kingdom. Uh, nearly 11% came from Ireland. Uh, Germany were in third place at 10.25%. People from the Spanish mainland, 8.6%. And France were in fifth place with 6.9%. Now again, I personally, I see a threat in these numbers. Uh, I think 50% of our tourists coming from one country uh, is a, a risk factor because if anything happens in that country, it could be as simple as they just fall, in, fall out of love with Lanzarote or they fall in love with another destination. Uh, we're at risk. If that country gets into financial turmoil where uh, people's disposable income is greatly reduced, we are at risk because one of the first things they start to cut in that scenario is uh, travel abroad. So I, I know the Cabildo is aware of this, I know they talk about it, but they have been talking about this for years and they haven't really achieved any success on it. But again, we have to try and find a way to diversify that, to uh, reduce the reliance on one single market. You know, the, I come from the motor industry many years ago, but I worked for motor manufacturers before we moved to Spain. And I always remember the story of uh, Porsche, 
and uh, Porsche in the 1980s had about half of their sales going to the North American market. And when things went wrong for them in North America and the Americans fell out of love with the brand, they stopped buying them in a very, very short space of time. It almost bankrupted the, country, the company because they just um, were not able to pivot and start selling their cars elsewhere. Um, since they've been part of Volkswagen Group, of course, they have become an absolute profitable powerhouse, but they really were raised from the ashes um, of disaster after they put too much reliance on one market. And sticking with tourism for a moment, of the official attractions, Tim and Fire was the most visited by a very big margin, just under a million people. So fully a third of those visitors to the island um, visited the Fire Mountains. And that was followed by Jameos del Agua at 883,000 and then Cueva de los Verdes at 585,000. Now the next section is called society and it's a bit of a generic term that but there are two things in this section that I picked out and the first is that the average value of properties in Lanzarote rose last year to 2,463 euros per square meter. Now, I've never really agreed with this way of valuing properties in Lanzarote, uh, but it is, it, it's how it's done, it's how the mortgage companies look at properties, uh, but to me it doesn't take into account any of the uh, vagaries of location. I mean, for example, uh, you know, a 100 square metre house uh, on the seafront overlooking Puerto Calero uh, is probably worth, well certainly worth, significantly more than a 100 square metre house uh, in one of the barrios of Arecife. But anyway, this is the system they use. Uh, and that, I can tell you, has risen dramatically since this report was written. It's gone over 3,000 since then. But it is quite a good rule of thumb because it's how the mortgage companies think, how the banks think when they're lending for mortgages. Um, so you know that uh, if you're looking at a property to buy, uh, you can calculate th what you're paying per square meter and hopefully it's below the average so that you get a strong valuation and a decent mortgage offer. And the other one in society is crime and it was reported that crime rose by 4.2% year on year in 2024 uh, and the total number of crimes were 7,000 285. There was a bit more detail on that. There were no murders. Uh, the types of crime that fell were robberies with violence and robberies by forced entry, uh, but the types of crime that rose were drug trafficking and theft from cars. Uh, and I, I was sort of encouraged by that really. Uh, crime here is very, very low uh, compared to almost any northern European country. Spain's as a whole is low, the Canary Islands is dramatically lower than the rest of Spain. So your chances of being a victim of crime here are small. And whilst they went up by 4.2% last year, um, the, your chances of being murdered are zero, uh, but also your chances of being robbed or robbed uh, by forced entry are significantly lower than they were last year. You are more likely to be a victim of drug trafficking or theft from a car. So a, a bit of common sense here, don't leave things on display when you're parking your obviously a higher car anywhere on the island and, and hopefully we can all bring that figure down even further. And the final section is all about transport. Um, and first of all on transport, the, uh, we saw the message that cruise ship passengers uh, have gone, uh, went up in 2024 to 610,000, which is a 70% increase over the last 10 years. I'll come back to that in a minute, but I'll just give you the other key stats. Cargo tonnage into the port of Arrecife also hit a record high, 32% up in the same period. Um, aircraft movement uh, movements at Manrique, uh, Cesar Manrique Airport were a record 71,600 uh, with 8.7 million people transiting in and out of the airport. The island's buses also had a huge year, 15% uh, up on the previous year with 8.2 million passengers travelling. So, uh, I mean, all of these things are affected one way or another by tourism. Uh, the one I wanted to go back to was cruise ship passengers. That's gone up 
by 70% over the last 10 years. And Arrecife has really established itself as a, a great winter cruise hub. Um, and it's done very, very well out of it. It's helped the um, improvement, income and infrastructure of Arrecife in the years since we started receiving cruise ship visitors from there. The beauty of people visiting the island on cruise ships is that they're not using the island's resources. So they're not using the island's water, um, hotel space, um, uh, um, and all those kind of other things. They're just coming in for a day, hopefully spending some of their money. The cruise ship, the cruise lines are uh, spending su significant amounts of money to pay to dock their vessels there and to buy food and fuel and whatever else they need from the island. So despite the fact that some people seem to hate cruise ship passengers, they are pretty good for the island. And the only other thing I'll go back to in that section before we wrap up is the 8.7 million passengers using Cesar Manrique Airport. Now, I remember the last time there was renovation work done from there and uh, IENA, who are the airport's authority here, kind of boasted that the airport is, was future-proofed and it was going to be able to cope with 8 million passengers comfortably. Well, it's significantly over that already and we are they are planning um, more work and more um, aircraft piers and and all sorts of work over the next four or five years there but we have exceeded what they said was their maximum level already so there you go well done if you've stayed to the end you are a, a fellow stats junkie and uh, welcome to my world uh, i hope you've enjoyed that and uh, if you've got any questions or comments just pop them in the comment below you know i'll be interested in uh, in reading them thanks so much for watching everyone uh, don't forget to give us a like if you've liked this video bye for now bye